Hello, good morning everyone, and uh, we're so glad you joined us this morning for our morning worship and prayer. And uh, let me begin by encouraging you with uh, what the psalmist said. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. You know, the Lord is the one who renews the face of the earth by His Holy Spirit. And so there's a reason for us to, to uh, honor Him, to love Him, to put our hope and our faith in Him. So let's do that as we come together in worship and prayer. Father in heaven, thank you for your wonderful promise that your mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And Lord, we put our confidence and our trust and our hope in you because you are the maker of heaven and earth. And Lord, it is you who sustains us by your Holy Spirit. So bless our time together as we worship you in spirit and in truth, as we meditate upon your word. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray, amen. Sa iyong biyaya, ako ay namamanga Sa iyong kalinga, mga nibay di banta Sa pag-ibig mo, malaging ligtas ang puso Mangusap ka, lingkod mo'y naki Kini sa ingay man, bulong mo'y natatangi Pag-asa ikaw, sa'yo puso ko'y tatan Sandigan ang puso ko ay nahanap sa Kailan may 
sa piling mo ako'y ligtas sa nigat ng puso ko ay nanap sa iyo Kristo pangalan mo kalungan ko sa Let's pray. Father, we are grateful this morning for your presence in our lives. For you said that uh, you inhabit the praises of your people. And we continue, Lord, to honor you. For you are the author and the finisher of our faith. Lord, even as we sang and confessed that you are our refuge, our fortress. Father, we continue to rely upon you for the strength that we need for this day. So be with us, Lord. Speak to us through your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. For this morning's uh, devotion, I want to just read to you Psalm 90. I'm going to read the, uh, a portion of it, the first half, and then make some comments, and then we'll read the rest of it uh, along the way. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were bore, brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You return man to dust and say, Return, O children of man. For a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday, when it is past, or as a watch in the night. You sweep men them away as with a flood. They are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening it fades and withers. For we are brought to an end by your anger, by your wrath, we are dismayed. You set, have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. For all our days pass away under your wrath. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The years of our life are 70 or even by reason of strength, 80. Yet their span is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger and your wrath according to the fear of you. Now, you know, every biblical writer uh, wrote their their write, wrote their you know their books out from their own encounters with God. Uh, I don't think there's any Bible author who did not meet God in a very real and demonstrable way, uh, and to be able to write about who God is and what He's done on behalf of His people. So. Uh, every, as he said, every biblical author had their encounters with God. And certainly Moses, who is the author of this particular psalm, uh, this particular psalm, had, I believe, more encounters with God in his 120-year life than perhaps any other biblical writer in the Old Testament. In fact, uh, you know, uh, Genesis says that Moses encountered, uh, he was probably the only one who encountered God face to face. That's how... Uh, you know, how significant Moses' life is. And so when we hear him uh, give his, this psalm of really uh, of wisdom, we, we realize he's speaking uh, from, a, from a genuine walking with God for 120 years. And so um, we know that Moses lived a life of privilege for the first 40 years of his life, but he saw the oppression of his own people, tried to do something about it. He, you know, he tried to meet justice against the oppressors of the Israelites and then paid dearly for it. He was exiled for 40 years. And out of that 40 years, the Lord prepared him to be the deliverer of Israel. And we know that uh, some of the most awesome miracles took place under his leadership. And the, for the last 40 years of his life, he took care uh, of uh, shepherding the, 
the people of Israel. But yet we know ultimately he didn't make it to the promised land. He only saw it from a distance. Now, what, 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 what can you learn from this particular psalm? In his lifetime, Moses saw the power and the mighty deeds of the Lord. And at the same time, his compassion for the oppression against his people. And he demonstrated it through the mighty works, through the plagues, through the crossing of the Red Sea. Yet this same Moses who saw the power and the compassion of God also saw the wrath and the anger of God um, for their persistent unbelief and uh, for the sin of the people in uh, disobeying God and not wanting to follow Him in spite of the miracles that the Lord did. And so he came to this conclusion, as we saw in the reading, that our lives are so transient. It's like grass that quickly grows in the morning but withers by nighttime if we don't live rightly before the Lord. Now, I don't know about you, but it is, you know, I've, I've read this psalm many times in the past. And every time I read it, knowing what Moses, who Moses was and what he went through, it's really a very sobering psalm. And uh, that might not be what you want to hear in, right in the morning. You know, your, your, your lives are temporal. It's just transitory. It's so brief. It's like grass that grows in the morning and just fades away at night. And so, uh, in light of what he's saying, is there a, do we just live lives fatalistically or do, we, um, or do we have a sense of hope in this particular psalm? Well, if we read the rest of it, then uh, we get to put things in perspective. And so hold on and we'll see what Moses' conclusion was given all of this uh, reality about the brevity of our life, the greatness of God, and how we ought to live our lives. So here, um, Psalm 90 verse 12 to 17 says this, so teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us and for as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work be shown to your servants and your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord, our God, be upon us and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. And so we see here in the latter part of this psalm, Moses giving his admonition, given how transient, how brief our lives are, we ought to live lives wisely by realizing, as I said, it's so brief and... Uh, then we should live rightly before God. And as one person said, wisdom is not about counting our days, but making our days count. He said, teach us to number our days. So it's not just, you know, watching the days go by. You know, this uh, pandemic has just gone, you know, by what, seven, eight months now. And we just keep waiting for the days, you know, to... To, to go ahead so that we can go back to our normal lives. No, I think what God is wanting us to say is, in spite of what's happening now, we can actually order our lives aright in the wisdom of God. And so that's how we make our days count. And so for the remainder of this brief time we have, I want to share with you from this text that we read, how do we gain a heart of wisdom? Okay, how can we live wisely? And wisely here is not just about having something profound to say, but it's really living according to the will and the purpose of God. And I want to give you four um, exhortations briefly from this text that we read. Number one is this, find your satisfaction, find satisfaction in your relationship with God. He says, um, satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Where do you find satisfaction in? Is it in the things that you do? Is it in your, re is it in your wealth? Is it in your relationships? All of those are blessings from God. But the greatest blessing of all is not in those material things. It's not in those human relationships as important as they are. But ultimately, it's on your relationship with God. And guess what? God wants to satisfy us. God wants to fill us with the knowledge of Himself. Because He wants to fill us with your, His love. And when we're secure in the love of God, then everything else will flow from that sense of security. Number two, let the joy of the Lord be your strength. He said, make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us. For as many years of you, as we have seen evil. And if you back up, he says that we may rejoice and be glad all of our days. You know, the reality is we see affliction, we see hardship. We have times of rejoicing and 
That's the ebb and flow of life, isn't it? We have our ups and downs. We have our wonderful circumstances. We have our difficult circumstances. And in the midst of all of that, whether you're in plenty or in want, you know, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, as, as, the, as the Apostle Paul said. So let's continue to allow the joy of the Lord to be our strength. You know that joy is not an emotion as much as it is a fruit of the Spirit, isn't it? Because you can be, uh, you know, you can be happy if your things are going well with you, but you'll be sad when things are not going well. But you know what? You can have joy whether you are in plenty or in want, whether you're in triumph or in uh, having challenges in your life. But we can let the joy of the Lord be our strength. Number three is seek the favor of God. He says, uh, let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us. I think more than seeking the approval of men, seeking uh, the approval of your, uh, seeking um, to just uh, satisfy yourself, let's seek the favor of God. Because when we find favor in God, then we see His grace abounding in our lives. And uh, if we please God, then He will be the one to make things right with us. In, it says in Psalm 5, uh, the, the favor of the Lord is like a shield for those who are righteous. And finally, number four, Work as unto the Lord. He says in verse 17, Let the favor of God be upon us and establish the works of our hands. Yes, establish the works of our hands. You know, when we're living this life in a, tra uh, you know, in, in a transient manner, we know our lives are going to come to an end. We wish it were longer. Uh, as a 70 or even 80, as, uh, the, as uh, Moses said. But yet, whatever measure of time God gives us, we can live in wisdom by making the most of every opportunity. And one of those has to do with our work, with our vocation. Whether you're a student, whether you're a child, whether you're an adult or an old person, there is a work that God's called us to do. Raising our families, working a job, yes, doing the works of the ministry. But the psalmist said, establish the works of our hands. In other words, we dedicate our work as unto the Lord. And guess what happens? God will reward us. So it's not just how brief our life is, but there's a, an eternity that we're living for. And that's how we live lives of wisdom, by doing our work. Whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord, and God will reward you. And so let's pray as we end our time together. Our Father in heaven, thank you that we can live lives of wisdom. We don't have to live in a fatalistic way. We don't have to live in hopelessness. Lord, despite what we see around us, Lord, that the brevity of life, Lord, life is so short, yet we can make our days count by living a life of wisdom. And so I pray, release the spirit of wisdom and revelation and understanding upon your people so that we can look to each day as a day of hope for we know that you, you will reward us. You said, always give ourselves fully to the work of the Lord because our labor is never in vain. Amen. As we look forward to this coming day, we, we can be encouraged by the realization that uh, if God is for us, who can be against us, isn't it? Uh, we don't have to earn God's favor. Yes, I saw, talked about 
seeking God's favor, but we already have it in Christ. And so uh, go in the favor of God. God bless you.